In this video, I'm breaking down the exact science of how to run your fastest mile using the latest research and real world training methods, so you don't waste your time on inefficient workouts. My name is Nicholas, I'm a sports scientist, physiotherapist and former professional triathlete. Now let's get straight to it. To run a faster mile, we need five things. A high aerobic engine, or how well your body uses oxygen to run faster for longer. An aerobic power, or how much speed and power you have for those short intense efforts. Strength, so basically how strong your muscles are to push you forward with each step. Running economy, so how efficiently you use energy when you run. And finally, pacing and pain tolerance, so you don't blow up at the end, but you don't start off too slow either. Let's break down how to train each, and then I'm going to show you an example of a full training week that you can start using today that takes advantage of all of this knowledge. Fair enough. Then let's start with the first part of your aerobic engine, which is also known as aerobic power. In simple terms, this is your body's ability to take in, deliver and use oxygen when you run. Usually we measure aerobic power with something called VO2 max, which is basically how much oxygen your body can use at your max effort. The higher your VO2 max, the better the engine. So why does VO2 max matter for the mile? You might think that the mile is short enough to just be about speed and sprinting, but here's the truth. Even in the mile, your aerobic system that uses oxygen to produce energy does most of the work. In fact, this review from 2001 found that for all out efforts that last about four to six minutes, approximately 80% of your energy comes from your aerobic system and 20% from what's called your anaerobic system. And as your race gets longer, your body shifts to using mostly oxygen for energy. So in the mile, most of your energy is actually coming from the aerobic system even though it can sometimes feel like a sprint. So how do we train aerobic power? This systematic review from 2015 found that both regular endurance runs and high intensity interval training make you fitter and improve your VO2 max. So we can basically run more miles or we can do high intensity interval training, which is why most elite runners do both. But if you're short on time, then high intensity intervals is probably the way to go. And the review also found that for beginners, especially this way of training produced better VO2 max gains than just regular endurance runs. Now there's a bunch of ways to design high intensity interval training to increase your VO2 max, but I keep coming back to this protocol from this study in 2007. They found that doing four by four minute intervals is a great way to improve VO2 max when compared to other types of training. Meaning you run for four minutes at 90 to 95% of your max effort for that four minutes, so not your maximum effort for 10 seconds, but for four minutes. And then you have a three minute break, and then you do another four minutes, and then you repeat four times. But aerobic power or VO2 max is not the full story. There's a second aerobic gear that is just as important if you want to run your fastest mile. It's called your lactate threshold. So what is the lactate threshold? In reality, there are two lactate thresholds, but I will only focus on the one that is called the anaerobic threshold. This is the speed or effort level where your lactate starts to build up in your blood and you can't clear it as fast. And lactate is a byproduct that you make more and more of the harder you train. But if it builds up in your blood, then at some point you have to stop. But if you stay just below that lactate threshold, so basically you build up lactate in your blood, but you can also clear it at the same rate, then you can keep going for a long time. So the higher that is, the better. So why does it matter for the mile? VO2 max is basically the size of your engine. The bigger it is, the more potential you have. But running faster for longer does not just depend on having a big engine, but also what percentage of that engine you can actually use when you try to run faster for longer. And here's the key. Your speed and lactate threshold brings all of these together. It shows you how fast you can go before your body needs to slow down from fatigue. That's why this review from 2004 found that speed Speed at lactate threshold is the best physiological predictor of distance running performance. If you raise your lactate threshold, then you can run faster for a longer period of time before you need to slow down. So how do we train lactate threshold? This is where what's known as tempo runs works really well. Workouts like a five times six minutes at a hard but sustainable pace with a short rest in between works wonders here. You should finish the last interval feeling like you just had a bit more left in the tank and not completely wiped out like after VO2 max intervals. But that brings us to anaerobic.
aerobic power. In simple terms, this is your body's ability to produce energy without oxygen. Think of it as your turbo boost for short, intense efforts. Your anaerobic power kicks in when you want to run really fast like the start of a race. So why is that important if we want to run a faster mile? Let's get this straight. A mile is not a marathon. It's not even a 5k. And it might sound obvious, but if you want to run a faster mile, you actually have to get faster. And even though 80% of the energy that you use during a mile comes from the aerobic system that we just discussed, if we don't train the remainder 20%, then we are leaving a ton of speed on the table. And in reality, it's not like the body switches off one system and then turns on another. It's sort of like a continuum where you use more of one energy system and then less of another. But both are running at the same time all the time, just to varying degrees. So how do we train our anaerobic power? To really build anaerobic power, we need workouts that push you past your comfort zone. Think hard, short bursts of just pure speed with enough recovery in between that you are ready to go hard again. Hill sprints or something like 200 meter sprints on the track are great for this. And this study from 2023 found that we can also build anaerobic power outside of running we can use something called complex training, which brings us to strength training. While multiple reviews have shown that strength training makes us faster by improving our running economy, for shorter distances, doing complex training might be worth looking into. So what is complex training? It works like this. You start by lifting something heavy, like deadlifts or squats, at 75 to 90% of your one rep max. And you just do a few strong reps. Then, after just a short rest, you go straight into doing an explosive movement. Something like squat jumps or box jumps. This combo is called a complex, and it's been shown in studies to improve anaerobic power more than regular training alone. So why is this? Well, in simple terms, the idea is that the heavy lifts sort of wakes up the fast twitch muscle fibers. So when you do those jumps afterward, then you are primed for explosive movements. Meaning you can jump higher or sprint faster than you could if you had not done that heavy strength training. This is a science-backed effect called post-activation potentiation. Yeah, try to say that three times in a row. Basically, it just helps you get more power out of your muscles. But use it with caution, because it also comes with a higher potential of injury, especially if you do it too much or with improper technique. And while the benefits of complex training is promising for the mile, it's more indirect than for pure sprints. And if you're unsure about technique or making things way too complicated, then don't worry. This review from 2024 found that just doing normal heavy strength training improves running economy and makes us faster. Which brings us to the fourth thing that we need if we want to run a faster mile running economy. Running economy is how efficiently you use your energy when you run. You see, if you have two identical runners in terms of fitness, then the runner who uses that fitness most efficiently will run faster. And a meta-analysis from 2024 actually looked at how different aspects of running biomechanics affect running economy. The researchers found that vertical movement, or how much we bounce up and down, does have a big effect on efficiency. And I mean, it makes sense. If we use less energy Energy going up and down, I know that we can't erase it entirely, but if we use less energy and more of that energy is going towards making us go forward, then we move faster going forward. Another meta-analysis from 2022 found that increasing your step rate by about 10% may help you lower risk of knee pain and overuse injuries. So basically, if you run with a cadence of 160 steps per minute and you increase it to 176, then your risk of overuse injuries and knee pain will decrease. And since the number one predictor of running a faster mile is actually being able to do the work, then staying injury-free is crucial. So how can we improve our biomechanics to run a faster mile? Well, in my years of coaching, I've found two strategies that work. So the first one is basically just staying consistent. Most people find that over time, their running economy becomes better. The second one is either filming yourself or finding some mental cues to help reduce that vertical movement. One mental cue that I've seen work wonders is imagining that you have a piece of gum under your shoe and you need to wipe it off with each step. This helps activate your 
glutes, make your stride a bit longer behind you, and then reduce that vertical movement. Now, before we bring all of this together into a weekly schedule, we first need to discuss the fifth and final thing that will make or break your mile. Pacing and pain tolerance. So let me ask you this. Have you ever gone for a run, felt amazing, and then just started out way too fast, only to just completely burn out by the end? Don't worry, you're not alone. This review from 2014 found that even in military fitness tests, it's common for people to sprint out of the gate only to slow down dramatically and have a tough time holding on. This usually happens because we're excited, nervous, or feel pressured to perform. So what's the smart way to pace your run? If we look at world-class athletes, they don't actually sprint right out of the gate. Instead, they settle in for a strong, steady rhythm for most of the race, saving some energy for the last last big push. And then they pick up the pace in the final lap. But that begs the question, does going out faster never work? According to the review, there's some research with college runners showing that for some, starting about 6% faster than their goal pace during the first mile can actually lead to faster times. But only for the most fit and well-trained athletes. For most of us, especially beginners, going out too fast usually just leads to hitting a wall. And once you've lost your pace, it's very hard to make up for that in the final part of the race. So. What do we do? For most people, especially beginners, or if you're doing a fitness test, then go out a bit slower than your goal pace and then pick it up each lap and then finish with an all out sprint. Think of it like building a fire. Start steady, then keep the flame alive and then add some fuel to the fire. Also, the great thing about the mile is that we can actually try it out in training. We don't have to go for 42 kilometers like with the marathon. We can actually try out a mile and still recover enough to go hard again in a couple of days. And it's a great thing to try now and then just to train that pain tolerance and try to feel the flow of the speed that you're trying to run. Okay, so now let me give you an example of a weekly training schedule that puts all of this information together. The goal is that each workout targets a specific thing that will make you faster and more powerful over the mile. And the structure is made so that you can recover, adapt, and get the most out of your training. And if you're just getting started Started, then honestly, just going out and running some more will help you improve, but otherwise make sure to adjust the intensity and volume to fit your needs. And remember, this is just an example. There's a million and one ways to do this. On Monday, we do aerobic power with four by four minute VO2 max intervals. We do this to boost your aerobic engine and overall fitness. On Tuesday, we go for an easy run of 30 to 45 minutes, focusing on running economy. This is to practice efficient form, reduce vertical bounds, and increase cadence, all helping you use less energy for every stride. On Wednesday, we hit strength and power with complex training. We do three to four sets of three to five heavy squats, followed by five to eight explosive squat jumps or box jumps. We do this to build muscle strength and power so you can finish the mile with a strong kick. We could also swap this for a heavy strength training session. On Thursday, we take a rest day or do active recovery like walking, easy biking, or stretching. We want to let the body recover and get stronger so you can train harder the next day. On Friday, we train anaerobic power with eight times 200 meter fast intervals with full recovery between each. We could also swap it out for something like 12 times 10 to 20 seconds hill sprints if we need even more of that high end work. The aim of this workout is to give you that top end speed you need for a fast mile. On Saturday, we do a long run of 50 to 60 minutes at an easy pace with a focus on smooth form. We do this to build aerobic endurance and make us more capable of handling the hard workouts. We could also swap this out for a tempo session where the goal is to run a fast, sustainable pace with something like five times six minutes with a one minute break in between. On Sunday, we rest or do a short mobility and technique session. But here's the crazy part. One of the best milers in the world breaks most of these rules and have changed the way that elite runners train. So if you want to learn the secrets behind the Norwegian's training method, then you should watch this video next.